So we want to reintroduce this whole car. Um, part of me wants to just... <laughs> How'd that feel? That hurts so fast. How'd that feel? <laughs> There's no room in this car. We're in this field. You look like Mr. We're Incredible. <laughs> I feel like it too. I had to move the seat way back and down. So sorry, Mr. or Mrs. Customer about moving your seat so far back. This car is tiny inside. So we um, are working on a Fiat 500 today. Um, and we had some issues already trying to work on this car. Uh, this is like our third or fourth attempt at introduction here. Fiat 500 came from a different garage, multiple different garages, park and brake issue. Uh, it's staying engaged, she can't get it out of park. She doesn't use the parking brake because of that and it started doing it on its own without her even applying the brake. So not while she's driving, but when she parks it, comes back out, then she can't get the parking brakes off. It's had a BCM put in it, it's had an EBCM put in it, and so now it's here and that's what we're doing. We have the top on on it, the Phoenix Max, couple things we had a screen recorder going and I went into the ABS system under functional test I was trying to actuate the rear brakes the entire program crashed including the screen recording so it made me very angry because the screen recorder shouldn't have stopped working you guys ask me all the time why I don't use my Autel oft as often as I do my snap-on and the top down is going to be in the same category and the reason why these Android based screen recorders do things like this. We yeah. don't have this problem with Windows screen recorders and that's why I'm, I'm constantly picking the snap on one man. So that messed me up big time. I'm really upset about it. We lost footage. That's number one. Number two, check this out. When we hook the scan tool up, the second we hit the ABS system to read that module, it it dings uh, lights on the dash and almost in a, in a way creates problems. Now it wasn't setting false codes, but the system certainly didn't like it. So we're gonna do the same thing right now. So it's 2016 Fiat 500X Lounge. I'm gonna do a full code scan. We did clear them, so we lost some history here because we we're using a different scan tool. Well, these are the ones that we're dealing with. The electronic br uh, park brake signal fault, incoherent state, and then electronic brake motor. Those three, those are the ones we're attacking. We have some airbag codes, adaptive, crew, no, some amplifier codes, some blind spot sensor codes, some BCM codes, some drivetrain control module codes. A lot of these are dealing with R. Park and brake issues. We have additional codes in here I didn't see before. Back out of here. And I'm gonna go into the ABS. So focus on the dash now, Caleb. I'm gonna hit anti-lock brakes. Yeah, it's doing the same thing. So um, that's a good word for top dawn as far as that goes. You know, it, it isn't just the top dawn that's making the system set weird uh, lights on the dash as soon as you enter the ABS system. I have seen that on other cars. We're not going to worry about that, but it's certainly not unique to top dawn. My snap ons doing the same thing. Main reason we went with the snap on then on this car is what? Screen recorder. Screen recorder can't chance that let's see what we have under functional tests uh, same list we had on the top dawn let's see what we have under system tests yeah park and brake management apply electric brake unsuccessful conditions are not correct okay I kind of had similar type stuff all right I'm just gonna deal with codes here all right I'm gonna go back I'm gonna clear these it says engine must be off but I don't I need to leave the engine run because our battery's dead. Let me try it anyway. Sometimes it'll let you. So the first one that comes back is the in incoherent state of the electronic parking brake. If I hit the brake button, put my foot on the brake too. Yeah, nothing doing there. Let's read the codes again. Yeah, so I got an electronic parking brake motor failure or left says electric general electrical failure this should be pretty straightforward as far as that code goes so the c140b94 set first and then the c140501 c140b94 is what we're going to look up first incoherent state uh diagnostic runs continuously ignition on set conditions anti-lock brake system module is not responding to parking brake switch position Electronic parking brake 
system portion of the anti-lock brake system mode is disabled. A note, diagnose and repair all other ABS module DTCs before continuing with this diagnostic procedure. Okay, so which one do we do first? The other one. <laughs> I said we'd start with this one. We need to do the other one. I uh, just want to see here um, what possible causes. Assembly check routine not performed, number one. Number two, anti-lock brake system module. Would the dealership technician that worked on this really have been that simple in his diagnostic approach? Do you think maybe he saw this code and said, oh, ABS module's on the list, let's change it. But what does it say? There's only two possible causes for this code. Assembly check routine not performed, number one. I don't know what that means, assembly check routine not performed, but the second one says anti-lock brake system module. But right above that, under the note, it says what? Diagnose and repair all other module DTCs first. To me, that means the assembly check routine not performed means that that particular one could be, could be as a result of other codes. That's what this means to me. We're not gonna do this one. So, so far we wanna look up the other code. C140501. We started with 01. There were multiple 1405s, but the 01 designation gives us a um, starting point. So there's diagram, diagnostic runs continuously, ignition on, no under or over voltage present, anti-lock brake system detects a general electrical failure in the parking brake actuator outputs. Electronic parking brake system is disabled. That's what we found, it doesn't work. Possible causes, electrical connector, terminal damage, ignition, run start, output circuit open, ground circuits open, left rear electric parking brake actuator, electric parking brake switch, um, anti-lock brake system module. Hey, <laughs> they changed the module already. Um, the switch one we did with the top Don, I'll show you that real quick the electronic parking brake switch down here, Caleb. This is in the neutral position right now, pushing down. That was the released position. Wow, this data is so slow. So let's customize this. I just want that one. Electronic parking brake switch. Nope, didn't help at all. Look how slow the data still is on this. This car and this scan tool are not really friends. <laughs> no reason to graph it. I'm gonna push down, but we'll just hold it in. I know it's gonna say a message for me to put my foot on the brake, but that's okay. So that's the release position. Let go of it. There's no way you could test drive using this data. So slow. Neutral position and then pull up on it. Applied, so the switch, how's the switch? In our flow chart, how's the switch, Caleb? Yeah. So diagnostic test, check for any active DTCs, perform any bulletins that may apply. Number one, we did look at bulletins. There's a reprogram issue. That was the only one. Turn ignition on with scan tool, read ABS DTCs and record or re on the repair order. Cycle ignition on and off, press and hold the brake pedal, push the EBP, EPB switch down, release park and brakes, pull the EPB switch up to set the park and brakes. Push the EPB switch down to release the parking brakes, release the brake pedal, cycle the ignition on and off. With the scan tool, read ABS DTCs. Did DTC uh, return? Yes, it did, because we've done that. It says go to step two, turn ignition off, inspect the EPB left rear actuator for proper mounting, visually inspect the EPB left rear actuator harness, visually inspect the ABS module harness. Okay, so we need to go inside the shop we need to pull this on the rack and inspect that left rear wheel. Um, as far as this thing activating and not releasing on her, I don't know yet, but we have hard faults for the electronic parking brake control system. We're gonna try to troubleshoot those. All right, I wanna do this procedure it's talking about just before we begin. And this is gonna involve us clearing the codes. It says engine must be off. I'm, I had this running long enough, I may be able to do this. Um, I, it said it cleared them, but I really need to turn the engine off. Let's see what we have. Yeah, the C140B-94 came back immediately. Uh, let me shut the car off. And then just turn key on. Let's clear these again. We read the codes. So the incoherent state came right back. Then it told me to have my foot on the brake, apply the brakes, or release the brakes, apply the brakes, my foot off the brake and then reread the codes again. 
Yeah, and then there's our, the left brake motor code comes right back. Just doing a visual first. This is broken. And it's corroded. Are you kidding me? Like the connector's broken and I see green corrosion right so there. So I wasted your time. No, but you see it? Look at the crack oh. and the green cruddies. So where the hell am I gonna find a caliper and a connector? I mean, and maybe it just needs the connector. But why would that make it stay on randomly on its own? I guess if it- Well, it has a position sensor too, don't it? That's, this is just junk, Danner. Like that's definitely, is that, that's definitely corroded. Pull it off. Here, wait. Pull it off, the whole thing. And yeah, there's water in it. It's full of water. Is it? <laughs> yeah. Come on, come on. Did somebody change the BCM and an ABS module for this? Yes. Right, no, come on, it can't be. Dude, I mean, that's ridiculous. Like, are you kidding me, a dealer? Well, she had a warranty, so I don't think she paid anything. Okay, but. But man, <laughs> they probably want to think a little bit before they think. just throw parts at the car. Parts changers. Damn parts changers. <laughs> See, if you li listen back on this a little bit back in future in time, <laughs> um, you'll hear me telling someone to throw a $50 part at something instead of... That's okay, but sometimes you do, but you well, know... It has an APP correlation code. I'm like, I can get one from a junkyard for 50 bucks. You could spend me 150 bucks for me to drive it for an hour and try to get it to act up. Oh yeah, intermittent faults, yeah, throw go Throw a freaking $50 uh, sensor I'm in good it, right? with that. <laughs> okay. Intermi good. Intermittent problems are different, man. This is not intermittent. This is happening all the time. That thing's green and corroded and it's full of water. I wanted to see if I had the pictures of her repair order just to prove to you that she actually did. So it was warranty stuff. I'm not but sure about the second one. But she hasn't been using it. And, no. and it will activate. But it's got a hill hold assist on it. Oh. This has hill hold function too. So if it decided to stop her from drifting backwards, probably from like a lateral G sensor or something in the ABS module, it sees her on an incline. So it would activate a, this and, and then until it, you give it gas and then let it go. And it's not letting go. It's not letting well, go. Well, when the actuator's green and corroded and <laughs> full of water, that would probably <laughs> happen. Is that um, digital? Shut up, Caleb. Yes, it's a digital photo. All right, cool. Us old guys, you know, we when we had digital cameras when they first came out, that's what we called them, a digital camera. <laughs> All right, so there's your picture. Let's get a closer up shot of this connector. Like it's broken at the top and that wire's corroded badly inside. I mean, you see the green. Yeah, I mean, there's still water. You can still see the water in the terminals. This side is not broken. I need a pocket screwdriver to release that. A brand new one. I'm, I'm gonna steal this off Dan or not tell him. What the screwdriver? This snap on screwdriver, yeah. There's a spider, did you see him? Oh, he just jumped. <laughs> <I> <laughs> did you see it? He just yeah. jumped, he's like, I'm out. Yeah, this one's comparatively better. Yeah, it's looking great. Yeah, all right. So just two wires on this, no position sensor. Danner mentioned some position sensor or something. Okay, unfamiliarity of the system, but it's two wires. So that's just telling me it's just the actuator. Uh, motor controls are important. Um, thinking we could maybe just clean this out momentarily and then test it to just see. We couldn't get it to function at all with the bi-directional test. Nothing would work because that code was coming right back. So I'm just gonna clean this before we do anything else. Just gonna spray this out, spray this out. I'll get an air nozzle and we'll blow dry that. This still looks pretty crappy on the connector, but let me, let me plug it back in and see what we can do with it. Let's clear these faults. And then Reread them. Still have an incoherent state code immediately. So if you see my layout here, you guys kind of have an idea where I'm going with this. If you follow me, this test light is gonna be our substitute for the load. We're gonna see if we can make that light flash on and off bi-directionally. That's number one. 
um, or number two. Number one is we're gonna do some voltage measurements on both sides unplugged to see if we have some type of bias voltage, which will indicate circuit integrity. So that's where I'm going with this. And then I'm gonna use my um, AES Wave terminal kit that we can plug in directly to this module connector without damaging anything. So we'll be doing some front probe type stuff. There we go, got it. Okay, some front probe voltage readings first. I'm doing this wrong. Anytime you're dealing with a side that's not working and you're trying to do comparisons, you should do the known good side first. So let's jump over there. The key is on. I just noticed some rusty bolts, right? Mm -hmm. Come over here. Look at that top bolt. See how clean that looks? Yeah. Let me get the light for you. So someone maybe did an alignment on this, changed the bolt. These are the, sometimes these are eccentrics that allow movement for camber. And maybe that's when this got broken. Mm. Just, a th just a thought, very possible. And the reason I caught that is I was like, oh, that's pretty clean ground over there. I was gonna go on the bolt or on the nut for my ground. And uh, that's what made me see it here. And I'm just gonna one at a time connect to each of these. I have nothing on that, but I could have a grounding issue. Zero volts on that wire and zero. I was, I was counting on some kind of a bias here. I really was. That's rather unfortunate that I don't have that because it helps with integrity. Okay. So I can't rely on bias, which is upsetting. So let's try something else. We know that that side was not coding, this side was. So what I wanna do, and this, these pins are a little corroded, but what I want to do is use my test light as, as the load. This is the SD test light uh, prototype. It's not finished yet, but it has the banana um, and on it to plug in. And then I can just kinda do that for this side. So now I have a substitute load in there. Don't know if this will work or not. I'm gonna go back to my scanner and I'm gonna first clear these codes. With my test light installed, I'm gonna reread the codes. I have now a circuit open code here that I didn't have before. So it doesn't like my test light or I'm not making contact. Should be now. So I didn't have a circuit open code before. Yeah, it's not like in my test light. Did I stretch this and make it bad on the back side? I just, I have this open circuit code I'm trying to get rid of now. Cool, so I got rid of the open circuit code, but I still have a incoherent state of EPB. I wonder how much of that's scan tool too, you know? Let me try the bi-directional test. See if it'll let me this time. Let's do a, just release parking brakes. It's not letting me, condition's not correct. What conditions do I need? It's giving me some coding at the bottom. The top down was the same way here. So I'm in neutral. Do I need to be in park? Could be. Doors open, hitting the brake, pulling up. And it's still not letting me. I got a park and brake motor left, general electrical failure back. That's with it unplugged with my test light in there. I just thought I could substitute it, being that that's got water in it. So did that maybe short something? They changed the ABS module and this reshorted it. I, I don't know that for sure, but I have the same fault. Let me exit out of here, clear these. I didn't hear the right side working at all either. 
And then if I reread them, the motor circuit one's not there until I try to exercise it. Tell me if that light lights right here when I do this. That's apply. That's, flash. it did flash. Yeah. So on the release it flashed, on the apply it did not. And let's reread the codes. Yeah, and I get a motor general electric failure. So it did flash on the release. Oh, I'm gonna do it again, watch it. Even with those codes there, let me try. Pressing the brake, pulling, uh, pushing down, pulling up, nothing. So it only did it once. Let me clear these codes. I mean, it, it, it's not really weird from a standpoint of codes will prevent outputs from turning on. All right, codes are cleared. Step in the brake pedal, pushing down, nothing. pulling up. Really? All right, trying it again, pushing down. Nothing. Pulling up. Nope. But you saw it flash once. And I'm, I'm not getting motor codes back. Park and brake on, pushing down, pulling up. Nope. Sorry for the dinging. Yeah, that's weird. Let me start it. Watch that light. Pushing down. That was on the push down. Here's the pull up, pushing down. Nothing. So one flash you got. It could be current monitored too. I just need to be able to make sure that we don't have a module failure here too. See, the problem is that I can't get the right side to work so I can compare for the left side. Like what kind of current flow are we talking about here? Those are some pretty heavy wires. I don't like the incoherent state code, 14. 0B. Okay, so we have a brake in an unknown state. How does it know? The left rear motor status says brake in unknown state. The brake is released. So I needed to not say that. Like there's got to be a reset and clearing the codes isn't doing that. So this guy right here, brake in unknown state. What do I do? How do I fix that? I don't want to just make a call on a crappy connector. You guys might be thinking, what are you doing, Dan? Or well, is it just a connector? Do we have a motor failure too? Why can't I get this to be, why can't I get this control to work like that test light being my motor? That's kind of my substitution. We might be dealing with a current flow issue where it doesn't like the test light, but you saw on the scan data that it's saying unknown position on this left rear. And then I don't know how it knows the position of this system. So it's a little bit unfamiliar with me. And so you guys are seeing me maybe running in circles a little bit because I need information and I don't have it off the top of my head. Uh, I need to do a little bit more research. So uh, I just clicked on the ABS verification test and this is telling me um, how to do it. Turn ignition off, connect all previously disconnected components, verify all accessories are turned off, batteries fully charged. Note if the BCM proxy is not performed, the ABS indicator will illuminate continuously. The ABS lights on, my scan tool caused that. The BCM proxy configuration alignment routine must be performed first if any of the following components were replaced. For the BCM proxy configuration alignment procedure, refer to standard procedure from what I was told the BCM was replaced. Perform the correct routines using the scan tool under miscellaneous functions with the wheels pointing straight ahead on level ground. ABS system. Routines, longitudinal, lateral sensor calibrations, hydraulic control unit, longitudinal, la lateral sensor calibrations. What's it telling me to do? Go into all these. Wheel speed sensor recognition, steering angle. Note, if any of the wheel speed sensors were replaced, test drive the vehicle at a speed above 25. Note, after erasing active DTCs, it may be necessary for the ABS system module to go to sleep before the DTCs are cleared. Oh, it's huge information. If the DTC is still active after the clear command, then turn the key off, ignition off, disconnect the scan tool, close all doors, and wait until all indicators on the cluster go out, typically 30 seconds. Verify that ignition is on with the scan tool, erase all DTCs, start the engine, allow it to run for two minutes and fully operate the system that was indicating a failure. Turn the ignition off, wait five seconds, turn the ignition on using the scan tool, read codes. Wow, is that huge information right there. 
Like I almost want to do that first. I cannot get rid of this, this in incoherent state code. And so what this is going to do, I'm going to try this. I'm going to disconnect my scan tool. I turn the key off, unplug my data link connector, close the door. Okay, interior lights are out. We'll give it like 15 more seconds. Just want to see if this will function differently af after that. Turn the key on. No, that code's still there. Watch that light for me whenever I go in and start this car. Tell me if that does anything at all, okay? Stepping on the brake. Not touching the parking brake one yet. Anything at all? Nope. Yeah, I got an immediate service electronic parking brake light. I don't think I had that before. It's not liking my test light. Okay, I'm gonna rethink strategy here. I'll unplug this. I plug this stuff back in. Yeah, I have an immediate service electronic parking brake light on the dash. I didn't have that before. It's like, how does it know it's open if there's no bias voltage there? There has to be a bias. I just didn't see one. It's definitely setting motor circuit open because maybe my ground wasn't good on both sides when I measured it. Yeah, I got motor circuit. There has to be a bias there. There's no way that that is setting that code without a bias. I need to redo my check. I need to get a different ground extension. I've been showing this lately, custom made for me with my logo on it. But let's plug the company that makes it. They're in the EU. Um, a subscriber of mine bought this for me and sent it to me. But this is the company that makes it. This is like the best ground tool that I've used yet. Just going right to the battery. And now I have a ground back there that I can trust a little bit more. But let's redo this ground check or this voltage check for bias, because I believe it is there. For it to have circuit open codes now, now we have a known good ground now, right? Pretty sweet. What? No way. There has to be something here. There has to be. Unless it's like broken further back and I'm not seeing it. How does it know, Caleb? Unless we're missing a pulse. It might be sending a quick pulse and I didn't see it with my test light. Yeah, just, just reverse polarity circuit. There's only two wires to each one. Am I missing something here? Did I just see a blip in the screen? Peak, peak detect turned on and off. I just expected to see a standard bias. I didn't see it on the other side either. Let's let's just check it anyway. Cause th that's the side that's working. So I unplug the the right side. Before we do anything else, let's do this. Let's reread the codes. Yeah, look, right motor circuit. As soon as I unplug it. So without even trying to activate anything. There is logics in this circuit and I'm not seeing it. There has to be a bias here. You know, I'm, I'm breaking a rule here and that's check, check your leads before you do measurements. I'm, I may have a bad lead here because I have nothing. Nothing there and nothing there. And the computer knows. Let's go up to the battery and let's check our leads. So we're good. I mean, my meter works, <laughs> my ground's good. All right, so why am I missing this bias voltage signal? I don't know, I don't know. So these downward spikes could be. Smart system. Is it those? I mean, those are pretty consistent.
Hmm. I'm just trying to figure out this bias, the operation of this bias circuit. And it might be these downward spikes when these are connected together as a load. Just want to see what this looks like with the test light in there. Test light installed, clearing the codes, rereading them. The right rear is gone. <laughs> just not seeing it. Just not seeing it. It's got to be the first time I've not been able to see a bias line that I know they're using it. I know they're using it. Because now with my test light out of here, let's go back, reread the codes. Bam, right side circuit. Pretty freaking smart system. I don't want to get lost on that. That's going to be more theory and operation stuff. But there is there is some type of a bias it's using. Whether it was those spikes or not, that's up for debate. It sure looked like repetitious pattern. So I got to say that that's what it was. Um, going back over here, let's see if we see the same thing. I do not. Interesting. A lot, a lot more noise, but I don't see that pulsing signal. I don't, I don't see the spikes. Okay, I want to get some better leads here because I want to try the test light experiment on the other side, see if it lights both directions when I apply and release the brake, but it only does it once. I'm worried about wiring. I'm worried about the module for this side because of the water that was in there. It absolutely could have shorted things out. Like it's recognizing open circuit stuff. It wasn't before. As far as codes go, it wasn't recognizing open circuit. Okay, now it likes it and I can't get rid of this code. And if I actuate the brakes, you're not gonna see anything. That was just me exercising the parking brake. And I get a electron, electric parking brake motor left. General failure, that 140501. Yeah, it says electric park and brake systems disabled. That's kind of hampering my diagnostics here. Um, electrical connector terminal damage, ignition run start, output circuit open, ground circuits open, left rear electric park and brake actuator, electric park and brake switch, anti lock brake system module. So, like, I almost want to run some jumpers. Let's do that. I, I might not like my test light. It's using something unique for the bias voltage. I was just thinking, how about we unplug both connectors, run jumpers to switch them to code wise. So what I'm thinking is wiring. I'm worried about module wiring to this and the computer itself. And that, that would prove out the left rear circuit. If I can plug the left rear into the right rear and the right rear into the left rear, you follow what I'm saying? That's what I'm thinking. So does it know on and off position with that bias? Somehow? No, no. It's a wiring integrity thing. So why would it say unexpected operation other than... I, I, uh, the only thing I can tell you is in the flow chart for that code, the one I can't get rid of, when you go back into it, it has you exercise the park and brake switch and if any other code's set to chase those first. And that's where we're at. I what have other code set? Yes, immediately, the left rear sets. Okay. I did see that code in there. So what makes the unexpected one go away once it works right? I don't know, but the unexpected one will disable the system. Okay. And I, I, it's telling me to do an ABS verification test which there's some procedures involved with that too, which is just clear codes and shut the key off and real good info. Some of these systems, you have to let the ABS module go to sleep before it'll clear the codes. So even clearing codes with the scan tool is not good enough. You gotta let the car go to sleep. This is exactly what I need. Thank you, AES Wave, for making such a freaking badass kit. I love these guys. Yeah.
Yes, sir. And you're going to run that to the other Yep. Are they all red or do you have black ones? It, doesn't, it, it, won't, ma it won't matter because it's a reverse polarity DC motor, so it doesn't matter how I plug them in. Oh. So left rear is now plugged into a, a known good right rear actuator. What we should have right now is only right rear codes. And when I exercise the button, it should not set left rear. It should only set right rear now. All right, clearing codes. We're gonna have an immediate right rear. Remember we have a bias in there for the right rear. With that connector unplugged, it's gonna recognize it. Yeah, so right motor state, circuits open. Break. I heard it. I just heard it too. That was the left rear control. I can't release it. Or did it release it? <laughs> what have I done? Let's see what we have. Yeah. No faults on the left side. So it's just that, mo this motor's garbage on this side. And it actually worked. Did you hear the motor? It released, it released on that side. I pushed down on it, pull up. I don't know which way, push down. I can't remember if push down was released and pull up was apply, but I heard it run and you, I don't, you probably heard, you guys probably heard it too. I made that side work. <laughs> yeah, it's locked, but I can't unlock it. <laughs> That's the symptom. Yeah, I can't unlock this now, it won't let me. So the left rear was able to lock well, because it's setting that other code that disables it, this incoherent state code, that disables this system. So let's see, how do I release it? When I push down, yeah, it's just like, it's not even giving me messages. Let's clear the codes. And then see if it'll give me one round to release it. No. So, uh, Danner. So, what I switched the left rear wiring with the right rear. Yes. And then I either apply I applied the brake. Okay. And it's stuck on now, and I can't release it. But that's kind of her complaint. Yes. I I honestly think this just needs a left rear actuator, because I couldn't actuate the left rear when I would set. When I did this regular and hit the button, I was getting left rear motor circuit function codes, yes, right? Yeah. I plugged the left rear wiring into the right rear and I no longer get that code. And it actuated the right rear actuator and now it's stuck. On the right side. On the right side. But I'm not-, not But if you clear the codes, well, you'd be well, able to release I, it. Well, that's what you've been doing, right? Yeah. I just tried that and I, which way's release, up or down? That I don't know. Neutral position. Pushing down, down is released. Okay, so it does matter, Caleb, as far as you asked me before what wire goes where, and I said it doesn't matter. It does matter from a standpoint of released is applied, yeah. and I just applied it okay, instead of releasing it, because when I pushed down is when it did something. Holding it in the up position, up is apply, and down is release. And, and I, when I push down is when it activated and I heard it. So that means I have my polarity backwards. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna switch these two because I don't want it to be applying when it should be releasing. So your question to me earlier, Caleb, yes, it does matter, <laughs> okay? Because when I hit release, it applied. Clear codes, turning the key off. Break, pushing. I didn't hear it. Why would it work one time? Why would it work one time? I'm not winning, Danner. Winning? Well, I'm, I'm almost 100% confident you need a left rear actuator. I'm gonna plug this back into here. Clear these codes. The 
code that's immediate. Nope, left rear motor circuit open code. You still have some of that Deox stuff, Danner? I do. Let me have it. Yeah. I stole one of your snap-on pocket screwdrivers. That one's brand new. I know. You're not gonna be able to see, and I'm not moving for you to see. I'm painting a terminal. Yeah, I left this motor circuit open code I can't get rid of. You guys are probably thinking, dude, just change it already. I agree, this needs a connector, 100%. And I agree, this is gonna need an actuator from what we're seeing, because my connector's good here. I mean, I know there's some corrosion here, but not bad enough where I was able to run this on the other side and make it actuate and get rid of the codes we had on this side. So I'm worried about this, but I'm also worried about the module. That's why I'm continuing to go here because there was water in there and I'm worried about the driver for the module and the fact that I could only get that other side to apply and not release. I, I just, I'm not sure. So that's why I'm going further. So I'm gonna see if I can get rid of this open circuit code. And I can't, so our open circuit is in this, in this motor itself which we didn't have till I started messing with this. I didn't have open circuit codes. There we go. I got rid of it just by wiggling those connections like up and down. So it's like very likely that the pins down inside. So maybe the motor's still okay, I don't know. Let's try an actuation, which I can't do because this incoherent state code is one that it won't let me do an actuation. Break on. Mm -mm. Let me shut the key off. Reread the codes. All right, it's no longer setting that left side fault when I actuate this. I can't get rid of this incoherent state of electronic parking brake code, but again, some of these, it's telling you to stop talking to the car after clearing the codes, and then disconnect your scan tool, turn the key off, close the doors, wait till the lights go out to let the module power down before it will clear the code. Just wait for these interior lights to turn off, network stuff. All the modules are still alive. We've seen this before. Turn the key off, network activity stays alive for a period of time. Flowchart said 30 seconds. So without even plugging the scan tool in, just wanna see if I can do anything with this park and brake. No, immediate service electronic park and brake light came on without scan tool on. I did too, I heard a release. Go check out left side for me. Definitely Make sure you film it too. Tell me if you can turn that wheel. Yeah. Okay, stay there. See if you move the other side. Yeah. You can? Yeah. All right, so it released them both. Let me try to apply them. Tell me if it was both. All right, stay there. I'm gonna release it. Left moves. Yeah. Right and you know what else too, is I'm looking at my dash. I had a service parking brake light on. It was telling me service system. That is now gone. So all of this is related to a smart system that um, is just corrosion and that, that me unplugging, plugging that back in with that fluid on there had, has reestablished re good contact. And that's why it's now working. Yeah. And the bias voltage they're using on this is so sensitive that it recognizes that fault right away. I think that's what's going on. I think what we're gonna see now when I re-enter this is we're gonna see that this is, these codes are gone. 
I got an ABS light just came on when I started talking to it. Park and brake light, traction control light. Um, but I think that's, again, that's just Scantle. And I have codes. Uh, electronic park request actuation fault motor right commanded position not reachable. Let's go back and clear those. No codes present. Let's go. Bias voltage that I was not able to monitor properly. And whenever I would actuate it, it knew right away there was a fault on the left side. So that whole incoherent whatever it has to do with bias voltage on those circuits. And then when I actuated it, then we'd get a left motor electric, general electric cir uh, circuit fault. The information was real poor uh, as far as operation of that. Now that we have no codes in this system, we're gonna do a clear all codes in all systems. I have the car running, I should have the car off right now. You're just gonna need a connector. That actuator's fine too, Danner. Really? Yep. Where the hell am I gonna get one of those? I don't know, or we just, you know, zip tie it back together and glue it so nothing else gets in there. And then I treated it with that deoxid stuff and... So it was just full of water though? Like when you it pulled it? It was full of water. But the module's fine. I, I, I can actuate it in both directions. I'm not worried about the ABS module. Um, I'm actually not worried about the actuator anymore either. I was worried about the actuator. Uh, but once I was able to make the right side work, I was like, all right, sweet. Now we're getting somewhere. And, and that uh, was with the left side wiring. Yes. And then I couldn't activate it anymore because the module just locks it out. It's just like, screw you. I'm not doing it because, you know, I don't like what I'm seeing. Um, and then I put your, that stuff in. I was setting left circuit code, open codes. And then I just moved it up and down, back and forth, got rid of that code, and then I was able to actuate. Now all of a sudden I can work everything. And then the implausible code's now gone too. Uh, let's do a code scan on everything. So like just some weird code setting criteria and also some weird bias voltage they're using. I couldn't even really see it. It was just like these blips on the screen, on the signal, real small, tiny, yeah. like, 200, 300 millivolt oh, wow. flips that it's using. I got this weird drivetrain control module code. Here, look at this, look at the number. Here's your code number. <laughs> what is that? That looks like a VIN number. Holy <laughs> yeah. That looks like the VIN number. Repair to OE repair information for code description. I don't know what that does. No codes in the ABS. No codes in the um, amplifier. We had code, no codes in the blind spot sensors. No codes in the BCM. Really? You had codes there before? I did. Was it, were they coming back too? Uh, no, uh, the BCM code one came back. Let me start it now too. Now, I didn't research them all, you know? Yeah, no, I mean, see. Here, here we go, let's push down. Let's release. Lights on too. That's, they're applied and it, that's release. I can't believe they changed the BCM and an ABS module for a cracked plug with water in the, in the <laughs> that can't be real. We, we have to be missing something. I'm serious. Like, I'll, I'll call her and this ask This is her. why, guys, this is why jobs like this have come from three other places. That's why, that's why we set a price that's very high for these cars to come in. Because we just don't know. This is one problem that we fixed. This is one problem. Is there more? We're not sure yet. A car like this, it came from three different places or two different places, two modules replaced. What other symptoms do we not know about right now? I think it was right the same now? dealer twice because there was a warranty and then you okay. know, the second time, okay. the first one they did the, they did the body module, I think, and that was covered. And then, oh, then they did the ABS unit and then they bled it all out. You know and I, there was some charge in that. You know what sucks though? When I looked at these codes, BCM was mentioned, so is the ABS module. Yeah, so it's just, I, I mean, can they can at least read. <laughs> <laughs> so should we go drive this to make sure? What do you think? I'll leave that on you, because you yeah. need to do some repairs on that, on that connector. So we need to really find one. And then, you know, we also have this weird ass code too for this 62, one, it's two different codes. There's a dash, drivetrain control module. 
I'll just see if I can clear these in this drivetrain control module. Now it says it's gone. Okay. Let's do a code scan one more time. That one came back under the code scan. I wonder if this tool is setting this code. Because if I clear it here, we're good. Code's gone. Let's start the car. And no warning lights on the dash. Yeah, no code. So I'm gonna say that might be scan tool that's setting that. Let's stop communication. One more time, um, park and brake. Let's, uh, I'll have you turn the wheels for me too here, Caleb. I'm gonna apply it. So uh, I think my foot needs to be on the brake. I'm gonna try it without. Don't need my foot on the brake. Tell me if you can move those. And one more time, release. My foot needs to be on the brake for the release. Oh, let me let off. Sorry. My foot was still on the brake. Okay. So um, I, we're done for now until um, my brother drives this. Probably gonna try to repair that connector, clean those terminals up a little bit, and um, then give this back to the customer and go from there. All right. Uh, what did we learn today? We did a visual inspection, saw a cracked connector and something full of water and the parts changer would maybe change the actuator and change the connector and be done. Next. That's really what we learned. Um, we certainly learned this is a pretty smart system, even though I can't see the bias. One more time. <laughs> that, that has to be the worst closing statement ever for a video like this. I said, Caleb, turn the camera back on. We learned a lot more than that. Of course, what the parts changer does, he would have fixed this way before us. But what are we trying to do? We're trying to understand a system and how it works. And we can apply this knowledge, what we learned today, to anything. And so I wrote down a couple of points here that I should have covered in this video and I did not. I think I was frustrated just in the whole process of that job. And I have like four or five uh, points here. Number one, bias voltage. It was definitely there. I wish I would have revisited that and got a little bit more detail on how it was actually determining open circuit. Um, I put my test light in there on the right side, the known good. And while I was watching it and I really didn't see a difference and we should. So there's questions on that and it's immediate. It's not like key on test and there's a current flow surge. It was immediately when I unplugged that right side, it set that open circuit code. Definitely bias voltage. Number two, we learned the test light can be used as a substitute. We've seen this in many other applications. It can be used as the load. When I put the test light in on the left side or the right side, I could get rid of the open circuit code. So the test light acted as a complete circuit with a motor control in there, the bulb being the motor. But something else we learned too, which is current flow is important when you're doing actuator type testing or bi-directional testing. If the current flow isn't right, then the computer is gonna lock that circuit out. And that's why we couldn't get that test light to light really more than one time while we were doing those checks. Computer recognized a current flow situation was off with the light and so variables with the light. That's what made us switch the wiring connector from left to right side so I could substitute the known good load on the right side with the left side being worried about those drivers in the computer. That was our whole process that, through this is worrying about wiring and drivers in the computer from water in that connector. Another main piece was the key off power down cycle to get rid of certain trouble codes. And that's new to me. I have heard that from other people. This is the first time that I saw it. And I, I think you saw here at the very end when I had some codes still and I had a light on the dash, I couldn't make that go away until I cycled through the system, a working system, cycled through being apply and release, and then also turning the key off and waiting all of that combined was allowing me to get rid of that fault code. Then I cleared it again and then they were all gone. So huge piece of information there. You're trying to fight at the end of a repair, a code that will not clear. Don't forget some cars.
turn the key off and wait. Disconnect the scan tool, wait. Plug it all back in, then go and see if that code's gone. Huge piece of information. Uh, the last one is the deox stuff, man. Talk about some pretty awesome fluid. Uh, that is the second time we've used that. If you guys are premium members, we had a Jeep with a star connector with bad solder joints in it that we actually were able to use the deox stuff in that star connector for CAN network fault. And um, my brother in the meantime had to order a new star connector and it's been about three months, maybe two months since that repair. And this owner of the Jeep just gave my brother a five-star review the other day for how the Jeep is still working and like six other garages couldn't fix it. And that was the Deox stuff. We still need to replace that star connector, but I'm just making it a point of that fluid and what it does is pretty, pretty sweet stuff. So there, there was more than just, uh, what did we learn here? You just uh, had a bad attitude. I did have a bad attitude. I, I was, I was frustrated with that car, and but we, we, Caleb and I just felt like we had to add this one last piece at the end. This is more about understanding circuit designs, how outputs operate, bias voltage, substituting loads, so we can make confident calls on faulty modules, faulty wiring, faulty components. And then, you know, selling the job again with confidence and, and you know, not selling, say, a, an actuator and a connector and then, you know, that being X amount of dollars and then going back to the customer and saying, I'm sorry, the module's still cooked or the module is also cooked on this particular output and now you need, a, you know, a thousand or fifteen hundred dollar module at the end of your original call. You don't want that. We want all of that together. We want to know together. Is it the actuator that shorted the module we need to know is it the actuator that's faulty along with a wiring problem we need to know and that's what this was about so hugely valuable on that front again i was frustrated on there um, in that closing statement not great caleb thank you for what you do guys thanks for joining us and i uh, look forward to your comments questions down below and we'll see you next time